I want to talk about a new chatbot that's just been released to an organization within the U.S. government. This is to the General Services Administration, the GSA. So this is called the GSAI, right? And it's this AI that has been released and created by, by Doge, the Department of Government Efficiency. Now, before I continue with the video, please note that this video has nothing to do with politics. This is not supporting or denying or having any stance dealing with any political affiliation or anything. I'm simply using something that has occurred within government so that we can talk about AI and how this pertains to education, to society, and all of that put together. So please keep that in mind as we talk about what Doge has done here. So the big thing is that they released this, this AI, and it's an AI chatbot. Now, this chatbot, according to an article from Wired, the chatbot itself uses an interface similar to ChatGPT. And then the person using it can actually choose whether they want to use Claude Haiku 3.5 or Sonnet 3.5 version 2, and even between that and Meta Llama 3.2. So they go in, use this chatbot with the idea that it's supposed to help them with their overall uh, jobs, right? So the big thing is that I'm sure you're aware that Dodge has gone through and has been going through and slashing lots of jobs from these different organizations, especially GSA. So now the people that are left have been given this tool to be more efficient, to be able to accomplish more tasks, to be more overall uh, effective with, with their jobs and what they're doing. Um, it's been designed specifically for GSA, which is interesting that it's designed specifically for that. So the interface is supposed to help them, and we haven't seen the, the interface that hasn't been released, but this has gone through a prototype that they've been working on for, I guess, a several months now, according to, to the article. So it's been geared specifically for them. And they've received some training, possibly. There was a memo that was released, uh, again, according to the article, a memo that was released that gave them some information on how to best use it, how to prompt properly, and a warning not to put in anything that is confidential information or stuff that is private, not to put that in there. So to me, that's very weird in that, why would you go through and create an AI or even use an existing AI, but not have it be protected so that people could use it for more advanced things, such as putting in different information to, to, to create this, even if it's private information. The fact that you're going through all this effort to create this type of AI, you would think it would be more proprietary so that it would be more secure. Now, they did say that it is secure, so it has enhancements to make it more secure, but it's still recommending not to put in private information or confidential classified information, not to do any of that. So that's at least good that there's some training going on there, but again, the only real training that we know is that there was a memo. <laughs> Um, and that's one of the things that I want to talk about in that because this is a big deal that it's being released to thousands of people that still work in these the government organizations. And based off of that, they're planning on releasing it to even more organizations. So now there'll be lots of people in government being able to use this AI. That leads me to think that, uh, and the reason I wanted to bring this up is because what I see is this is going to happen more and more, even in business and different organizations that a lot of organizations might be saying, seeing this and also thinking, well, we're going to cut jobs too. Now we can just deploy an AI to everyone, give them this uh, uh, information, and now they should be more efficient and more effective. But of course, it doesn't work that way, right? People need to have AI literacy. They need to develop an understanding of how to use these programs properly. A simple memo isn't going to cut it. There needs to be much more. There needs to be some hands-on training. There needs to be some presentations, some discussions, some workshops in order to be able to fully be able to use a tool effectively. Um, the recommendations within this uh, release was that, hey, this can help you to put together information for a presentation, to help you develop uh, an email, to help you summarize information as well as for coding, which is great. And those are good recommendations. But there's much, much more that this type of AI can be used for. So much more that can, it can increase efficiencies and effectiveness in any type of job if you know how to use the tool properly. 
it's funny because uh, they quoted one person, uh, it was an anonymous person, but they quoted that person and they said that, oh yeah, this AI is basically like an intern. That's as good as it is. But that makes me think that, hey, what that person is revealing isn't how good the AI is, it's how good that person is at using the AI. Because when we have more developed AI literacy capabilities and we have some instruction dealing with how to create proper prompts, how to develop, use an advanced prompt formula, well then we can use the AI much more and it becomes much more powerful than a simple intern. It can actually help us to accomplish way better things and become more efficient and, and effective in, in all sorts of ways. So this is sort of a lesson learned, I think, for, for governments, for organizations, for business, in that when you deploy an AI, it needs to be done in an effective way. This is sort of one of the things that I do when I consult with universities and other organizations in education is that, hey, using AI is, encompasses a bunch of things, aspects of policies, aspects of, of guidance from leadership, uh, understanding what are the training mechanisms that are going to be employed, who all is going to be fully trained with this. It, when we talk about education, we automatically think, oh, the students need to be trained. Yes, for sure, they need to develop AI literacy, but so do the instructors. So do, does uh, support staff, librarians, administration, secretaries, office assistants, even leadership. They need to go th through this training in order to fully understand what is this AI and what are the potentials and what are the use cases and what are the case studies? Because it's already been around for quite a while. It can do a lot, but we have to have all of these other aspects put together in order to use it efficiently and effectively. So that's a big thing that I wanted to highlight in talking about the release of this. And it's funny because they call it the GSAI, right? So it's a combination of who it's for and what it is which is interesting, but the big thing here is that we need to understand that this can be very powerful, this can be very effective, and yes, more and more businesses and organizations will also be reducing jobs because of efficiencies and effectiveness, but it has to be coupled properly with implementation and training in order to make sure that the people who are using it are using it in the most effective way. So I'm very interested in your thoughts. What do you think about this deployment uh, of, uh, of this new AI chatbot for, for government uh, reasons? Uh, I'm really interested to see your thoughts as far as, do you think it's good that they did this? Do you think it's bad? Do you think the way that they've done it is, is gonna be effective? What are some things, what would you recommend that they do differently? Um, my big thing is that they need better training, they need better implementation strategy in order to be as effective as possible. So I'm really interested to see an interface. I haven't been able to find the interface online, otherwise I would have shown you. But so if you can find that, please let me know. Uh, this is really important. This is an important, powerful development in AI technology and implementation because there hasn't been one used like this for regular government agencies. The military has had an AI that they've been starting to use uh, in general, the army has. Um, so. This is, again, a continuation of that as use of AI becomes more widespread throughout all, all sections of the world. This is one big thing that I've been talking about, how AI is being used everywhere, right? Governments, organizations, businesses, military, everything. So this is just yet another reason why we must develop AI literacy within everyone, within faculty, of course, but for sure students, because they will face this when they graduate. They're facing it now, but they're gonna need these skills in order to really succeed. All right, thank you everyone. And remember, learning is for life. I appreciate everyone watching this video. And if you got anything out of it, please like, share, subscribe so that we can continue to develop our community. See you later.